Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be doing my August K Beauty Haul. This time I have some Korean beauty as well as some Japanese beauty and I am really really excited about these products. This is a smaller haul than usual but I am still really really excited for the products that I have purchased. And as always, these hauls are not for me to brag about the products that I buy. They're more so so that you guys can see what I've got and request reviews on the products that you are interested in. So the first product I bought were new contact lenses because I have run out of my other ones. So I decided to try a new brand which is Olens. So these are the Secrets One Day Soft Contact Lenses in Coral Grey and I'm wearing them today because I'm totally out of my other contact lenses. And I purchased these from Pink Icon which I still think is a really bad name because pink eye is obviously an eye disease but it's like pink icon, like an iconic person. Um, still not a fan of the name, but I got these ones. There are 20 lenses in the pack and they look really beautiful. They are quite natural and they're only 14.2 in diameter, but they also sent some free contact lenses as well. So get them right the wrong way. I didn't actually realize that they were going to send these because I didn't see any promo for it, but obviously I missed it. So I got some free contact lenses, which is awesome. These ones are Revia one day color lenses. They're in the color brown and actually they are lenses that I probably would have picked for myself as well. And they almost came close to my prescription. They gave me 1.0, which is fine. I can totally still wear those, but they look really lovely. They're very plain, simple, just brown one day lenses, which I prefer over yearly and monthly lenses because I wear them very irregularly. So it's just as cost effective for me to be wearing daily lenses and they're much more hygienic. Now, if you guys would like to hear more about these contact lenses, do let me know. Otherwise, I won't review them only because the reviews, no one really watches them. There's no point in me doing them if people don't actually want to see or hear about the product. The next place I made a purchase with was a New Zealand based Korean beauty retailer called Nashi Lab like the fruit and I bought some skincare from them because I desperately needed it. So I got the Clear Supple Preparation Facial Toner which I tried out a sample of recently and loved and I've already cracked into it because like I legitimately did need it and I am already loving it and I just in general do really like Clear's products. I also bought some goodies from Cosrx, so I got three of the pimple patches because I just go through them like crazy, they're so handy and amazing. And I also got the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence, which I was kind of annoyed about because I actually purchased two of them accidentally. So I actually got another one from IBBI um, and I forgot that I'd purchased it from IBBI and because the shipping takes so long, like two weeks, it's not really that long, I actually bought another one from Nashi Lab. And thankfully I do like it, so you can see I've already started using it, so I'll probably keep both and just use them up. But like how annoying is that? Two of the same thing. Stupid. I also made another purchase from Adam Beauty, which is an online retailer that sells Japanese beauty, although I believe they are based in Hong Kong. So I got myself a new eyeliner, which is the Heroin Make Smooth Liquid Eyeliner. And now that I'm looking at the eyeliner, I actually think I've tried this before and didn't really love it, but it was very, very cheap. So I thought I'd give it a go. And the real reason that I bought from Adam Beauty is because I really wanted to try the Kate Secret Skin Maker Zero because it comes in the shade 00, um, which is supposed to be super, super pale, and I've already swatched it, and it is really pale, but it's pink toned, of course. So this is probably going to be really good for porcelain princesses who suit NW10 in MAC, but if you are on the Siberia side of pale, so the really warm toned yellow pale, this is probably going to look too pink for you. I have yet to try it out on my face and I'm just kind of really disappointed that it's so pink but it is really pale and the packaging is actually really nice and luxurious and it's got a pump on top which I love. My next purchase came from Tester Korea and in my last haul I had a great complaint about Tester Korea and this time I've also got a great complaint about Tester Korea because they basically did the same thing. I made my order within a whole week. It hadn't shipped. It was still on standby so I emailed them and asked them what's the hold up, which product is it that you need to source and the next like hour they were like oh one of the Etude House tints is out of stock so I ordered three of these from them. One was out of stock. Um, and obviously they knew it was out of stock and they couldn't get it for me because they emailed back within an hour. 
like they should tell me without me prompting them to do it. That's what annoys me so much about Tester Korea. Like my products will be on standby for ages and they know exactly why they're on standby but just haven't bothered to update me. In this case I knew that these were limited editions so they weren't going to be able to find a restock of them anywhere so I asked for a refund. They gave me the refund and then shipped my package. But it's just still... It's always Tester Korea. Like it's never anywhere else. It's always Tester Korea. I don't, I don't know why I keep ordering with them. So from Tester Korea I also got the Etude House Any Cushion which I am wearing today and it is a beautiful shade for yellow tone or warm toned porcelain princesses. It's slightly darker than NARS in Siberia but it is still a really good shade and I'm very happy with it so far. This is the first time I've ever tried it and I am doing a one brand full face of first impressions in the next two weeks in which you guys will see a demo of this but if you'd like me to review it because I know it has been requested do let me know and I will fast track that on to a proper review. I also got probably the cutest cushion I've ever seen and ever will see which is the 3CE style Nanda cushion. This is so cute I don't know if you guys had Polly Pockets when you were younger but this reminds me of a Polly Pocket. It is entirely pink and it is so cute. I got the shade 01 which is really really yellow. It is a little bit dark so I have yet to try that out on my face as well and again I'm really excited to try this so you guys will have to let me know which foundation product you would like to see first or if I should just do all of them in a row again which I'm very tempted to do but oh, it's so cute. Now keeping on with the cute 3CE style Nanda products I also got from the same collection, oh, I'm gonna drop them, <laughs> the cheek blushes and again so cute there are six different shades and they are fairly expensive I believe each of these was around I think it was 15 to 20 US dollars which is a lot of money but they are uh, like incredibly adorable however I have already swatched them and although the colors are really really cute and I can see myself wearing almost every one of them. They are really disappointing in terms of their color payoff. I have not tried them on my face yet but I am dying to because I really want them to work because like oh, they are just so cute and they're actually very small so I'll be able to store them really easily but the problem is that the color comes off on your finger totally fine this is like a contouring color but then when you go to swatch it it like stains just that finger part so it sticks really badly to the finger and then it won't blend out through there it's really really hard to blend them and you'll keep getting that like big splotch of color it's just bizarre I don't think I've ever seen a color that doesn't blend out so hopefully you guys will see what I mean by that so that's where my finger started and then that's the rest of the swatch but even if I keep trying to blend it out like it doesn't blend it doesn't go anywhere. I'm trying to like pull the color up and it's just staying there and then there's that giant like section of blush. I don't know. It's bizarre. But they are so cute. They might end up as a fail. I really hope not because they're really expensive and I really like the way they look but we will see. And the last two products I got from Testa Korea were these two tints. I was supposed to get three but the other one was out of stock so I had to get it from BB Cosmetic which is fine. So I got these shades OR205 which I am wearing today as well as the shade PK006 which I'm also wearing. This is the most gorgeous glitter topper I think I have ever seen and they dry down really nicely so it's a little bit like it's not sticky but it feels like moisturized because it's a glitter topper and it just looks so pretty. I am absolutely obsessed with the way this looks. So this is what both colors look like together. You can definitely still see the glitter. And like I said, it's not like, it's not wet or sticky, but you can still feel the product. But that's just the glitter topper. The orange one actually dried down like non-sticky and matte, but I am obsessed with the way these look. And my last haul is from IBBI, which I got pretty much all Etude House products and the Coserex Snail product as well. So I got my original bottle of this from IBBI and just forgot about it. I really need to write down my purchases so that I don't double purchase but at least I like this. It's super lightweight, super nourishing and hydrating and I can do a couple of layers of it as well without making my skin feel like gluggy. It is the most snail feeling product that I've tried in snail 
products. So usually when you have a product that has a lot of snail slime in it, it doesn't feel slimy or sticky or anything. This one does feel slimy. So if you're squeamish, then maybe don't start with this one, but it's super inexpensive and it is amazing. Oh, I forgot that I also got another skincare product. I got the Innisfree the Green Tea Seed Serum because I've tried a sample sachet of this and I really liked it, so I wanted to try the full size too. It's been on my wish list for quite some time and I've just put it off for absolutely no reason at all. So for the Etude House products, I got the Etude House Sun Prize Mild Airy Finish Sunscreen, which again, I just tried today. I'm not super impressed with it. It's quite thick and it has a bit of a heavy white cast and it really does need to be properly blended out onto your skin. You can't just pat it in because otherwise you'll end up with patches that will pill when you put other products on top. It also smells like lime, which is incredibly weird, but it's a sunscreen, so... We'll see how it goes with continued use. I also got the Etude House Zero Sebum Powder, which again, I'm wearing today and I really like it. It reminds me a lot of the Skin Food Peach Sake Pore Silky Powder, I think it's called. I had it ages ago and it lasted me about two years. And I loved it because it gave my skin that really silky soft feeling, which this one does as well. I love it. It feels so nice. My skin is still matte so far. <laughs> You'll see um, more of the first impression of this one later on as well in the next video, but so far I am a fan. I also got the only blushes from Etude House that I haven't tried yet that are still in stock in the websites, which are the Very Delicious blushes. There are three colours and I am wearing the orange colour today, though you really cannot see it because it is super, I don't know, it's just super subtle. I still like it for an everyday look. The red one is not subtle, it's about as subtle as a ton of bricks. Um, not really my style, but it's very interesting. And then I got three eye products. I got the Etude House Curl and Fix Mascara, which I am so far liking. I will see if it gives me panda eyes um, at the end of the day, though. The Easy Graphy Brush Liner in the color Deep Navy, which is not navy at all. It's like a deep foresty green, but it still works really nicely, and it's probably my favorite Korean beauty eyeliner that I've tried. And last but not least, I got the Etude House Contouring Kit for your eyebrows. I got mine in the shade Grey Brown, and for the actual brow powders, I am a huge fan of them, love them. The highlighter lets the palette down a lot. I am considering, like, scratching it out and replacing it with something else because it makes my eyes look dry. <laughs> it is not flattering, it is not highlighting, and it just makes my eyes look old. But it does come with a wax, two brow colours, the highlighter, and it's got a little spoolie and some brow um, brushes, which I am probably never going to use unless I really have to on a holiday or something, but it's a cool little contour kit. And that is it for my August K-Beauty haul. If you guys saw anything that you would like to know more about, do let me know in the comments down below and I will review them for you. Otherwise, I'll just choose the ones that I'm most excited about, which is not always the ones that people actually want to see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!